everyone. It's Joe from Lucas and I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I got some fun stuff. The summer's coming. I got some special guests today. Well, kind of. Chris <laughs> is with us again from wow. Momentum and we know Chris brings us a lot of great brands from Blue Note to uh, Smoke Wagon, just a ton of them. Thank you. He found us another one. I got Eric, who's the founder of Holmes K. And guess what his middle and his last name is? <laughs> All right, you got it. It's Holmes K. But I think this is so cool. So we're going to start to talk about rums because rums are really coming on and really starting to explode with the complexities. So I wanted to do higher end rums today. And then I want to talk to you about something special that's down here. Pretty pretty amazing that we got something coming in. So let's talk about these rums. All right, Eric? Absolutely. So let's talk about, well, for, we should have a little, yeah. we should have a little yep. bit of research and development. Thank you. Okay. So tell me a little bit about this one. I think it's important to, let's talk about for rums. Um, these are true aged rums. Absolutely. And uh, we started the company really to showcase the best rums out there. And it's the most diverse of all the spirits. You can get a rum from Jamaica, from Belize, from Guyana. They're all completely different from each other. Absolutely. And, you know, blind tasting, you could easily pick these three apart. And they make some with molasses, they make some with sugar cane. Yeah, the different right. stills that there's, come. Yeah. yeah, there's three different ways yep. you can make rum. Rum, you know, it all has to be sugar cane. Okay. But you can make it with molasses, you can make it with cane juice, fresh cane juice, which is the French style. Okay. It's called rum agricole. Um, and, or you can make it from cane syrup. Where they take the cane juice and they boil it down a little bit. You see a lot of that in Central American countries, I didn't, Guatemala. I didn't know that. Yeah, Nicaragua, they use cane syrup. Okay, excellent. Um, these are all molasses rums. So I'm molasses, which is, if, am I right to say that ones that are made with molasses are a little bit more of the higher end rums? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, the molasses ones are generally what traditionally been known as the British style, um, as opposed to the French style, which was, you know, the cane juice rums. Okay, um, cool. See, you learned something new. I'm learning. Yeah. And, and I have to learn this category because it's really gotten a much it's, bigger. It's starting to, uh, yeah. Starting and to take then off. the other, you know, big difference is you can make it either in a pot still, a column still, or a blend of the two. Um, oh, okay. So we're making it in several different yeah, ways. Jamaican rums are traditionally pot still. Okay. These rums are column still rums. Um, and then you get Barbados rums, which is usually a blend of the two. It's a pot and column blend. Now, I know we shouldn't talk about ones that you have coming, but I, you have a Fiji one coming too, which yeah. I was able to taste, which I thought was pretty cool. What's that? Is there a different still for that? or That is a blend of pot and column as well. Okay. Um, they do some single pot still amazing Fiji rums. Uh, the one we have coming out uh, shortly is a, a blend of pot and column, two years. Excellent. So I, that was a very unique one I tasted, but we'll talk about that one when we get it. Let's jump right into this Jamaican, sure. okay? So this is 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years. And to me, this is the classic Jamaican profile. What Jamaican rums are famous for is that really overripe banana, you know, overripe fruit uh, which comes from a higher or medium ester count. You know, they have a lot of open air fermentation pits. So you get a lot of wild yeast and bacteria that contributes to the flavors of Jamaican rums. I get some like young pineapple. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, you know. Um, you know, and a lot of things with a lot of alcohol, you know, we have tasting notes, but there's also, you could pick up other things, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're the owner, you pick up other things, right? Every time I taste it, you know, I come up with a different note. You know, sometimes there's camphor, sometimes there's oak tree, um, pine. So, you know, I have a hard time. You need to have tasting notes to give somebody a guide, but they're so subjective. Everybody's taste buds are different. So I'll throw in there's some spice in this, some yeah. leather. You know, it really has got so much character. Chris, how much is the Jamaican? Uh, that one is 101 here. Huh. It's hundred. Yeah, hundred dollars. Yep. Okay. So I just want to give you enough idea. I didn't. I didn't grab pricing real quick, but all these rums will be a little bit over a hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. I think this one's outstanding. What are your thoughts, Chris? Yeah. I mean, I get a ton of actually like candied apple, and it's funny bringing these in. That was originally kind of my favorite, and I've gone through about three bottles of that one now. Um, it's just I don't know. Every time I crack a bottle, I end up. Killing it in about two days. So it's, I don't know, it's an easy sipper, even with it being at about 120 proof. And um, 
one, yeah, yeah, 118. 118. Yeah, it's just it's something truly unique. And it's a beautiful, beautiful spirit. Yeah, so I think another thing is that we have to start looking at is for us, uh, like the bourbon buyers or the high end tequila buyers, mm -hmm. this is a spirit that you can actually graduate to, not graduate to, but move over to. Mm -hmm. That it's going to have that same complexity that you're going to look for with sweetness at higher proof. That's what I really love about it. Yeah, the good thing about rum, which Go ahead, Still, keep on I going. I would say it's an undervalued spirit in terms of what you're getting, especially because the angel share, the, the amount lost to evaporation, is much higher in the tropics than in you know bourbon areas or in Scotland with scotch. Um, the Belize, which we're gonna taste next, they were losing 10% a year to the angels until they insulated the warehouse and they got that down to about seven or eight, but. That's incredible. I mean, and the color yeah, of this color one, of that. I mean, this is, there's no, there's zero caramel added to this. This is pure 15 years tropically aged barrel influence. So this is my favorite one. Yeah. This is the one I have at home. And I, I mean, I, you know, but again, it's, I could drink every one of them. You know, I, it's, the, you know, I'm always surprised about this. And as the weather gets warmer, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to this because I'm going to start drinking a lot more rum. Um, this with a cigar is, if you like cigars, yeah, you cannot go wrong with this bottle right here. Cigars and dark chocolate is, uh, is what this rum goes best yeah. with. So right away you get like cherry, caramels, vanillas, all the stuff yeah. blows off on the nose really quick. Um, now this one's older too. This, this is, is old. 15 years fully tropically aged. So a 15 year fully tropically aged rum is the equivalent to about a 25 year old Scotch whiskey in aging and barrel influence. Oh wow. Because you're, you're losing so much more to the angels. Okay, so it goes quicker. So this one's 122 proof. It's 110 bottle on this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Thank you. Yeah. Well, the price is behind me. <laughs> so the one that I really, the why I like this one is you don't taste any alcohol. Right. And I find that always amazing because I've, I've tasted all the high-end rums and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a novice in all alcohol. You know, I like to learn and, and constantly learn. But when it gets to rum, I even have less knowledge, right? I've drank, we carry about 12 high-end rums mm -hmm. and we want to keep on bringing more and more in. I'm always fascinated with a product that can take the alcohol away at a higher proof. I'm, I'm enamored to those. I think they have the most flavor. And that's what I would tell you about this Belize. It's a super special bottle for me. I think this is just an absolute home run. Um, I, I truly enjoy it. What kind of notes do you get? Other than do you pick up, I pick up a little bit of tobacco and some like, I get a lot of maple and cherry mm -hmm. on it. Cherry and plum. So and what black, the black stone fruits and pepper. Mm -hmm. What is it? So what's this aged in? Uh, Buffalo trace barrels. No, really? <laughs> is that, oh my God. Really <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, I'm <laughs> just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, it's pretty damn good, guys. Yeah, this That's, is aged 15 years, and in fact, almost all rum is aged in ex-bourbon barrels. Yeah. Um, because there's such a glut of ex-bourbon right, barrels, right. because you use them once, and the Caribbean needs a lot of barrels. So that's where they get them. It's cheaper to buy an ex-bourbon barrel than constructing new barrels. There's not a lot of oak, you know, down there. I think that's just a that's just a great spirit. Okay, we have two more and one super special. Okay, so tell me about the next one we're gonna have. Next one, Guyana, um, one of the uh, birthplaces of rums. They used to have over a hundred distilleries. There's now one left on the uh, oh, really? country. Wow, that's sad. Demerara Distillers, but what they did is as the other distilleries went out of business, they bought and brought all the old historic stills to their plantation diamond estate. So they have nine historic stills and some of the most famous stills in the rum world are all in this one location wow. in Guyana. This one, uh, it's got a really funny name. Uh, it's pronounced Iflot. U-I-T-V-L-U-G-A-T. 
Yeah, I don't. Yeah. yeah. That looks like yeah. I spell. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a Guyana iFlot rum, and the iFlot still was a 19th century, or still is. It's a metal a French Saval column still. It's an old 150 year old. I'll have to look what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. It's interesting. It's yeah. an interesting historic still um, from the iFlot estate. And this one is 18 years from that, you know, 150 year old column still, you know, that, which is bears no resemblance to a modern column still at all. Okay. So how much is this one? 164. So this is the, this is a $164. We'll, we'll call it the top end of this line. Um, the oldest, what I find with this one, and I have a bottle of this at home is I find it extremely complex. Yeah. And, and, and it takes time to drink this one. Um, and I love having a cigar and I love having it with bourbon or scotch or something. But what I really like about not having a cigar is I get to study the alcohol. Yeah. You know, I pour myself three fingers. I sit on the couch. I have the lights off. My wife says, what are you doing? She doesn't ask me anymore. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. I'm, I'm just trying to understand it. And I found a new glass. I got to share it with you guys. I th might have found the best glass to drink alcohol in. I'll do a video on that. I'm trying to track them down so we have them in the store. Um, just a way to really explode flavors. But this one is super complex. So what do you guys get out of this? See, on this one, I actually get, I get a lot of plum on this one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny how I've kind of gone from this one being my favorite, and then this one was for a while when I was smoking cigars, and now this is my new favorite. It's, it, it is, it's extremely complex. Do you get, you know, when you, when I do this one, it's a, it's a unique flavor and it's off the tasting sheets, it's yeah. off of everything, like a nice, mm -hmm. you know, and you really look for that little licorice or something coming through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just that, at that, at that yeah. back end, I think it's an amazing flavor. Yeah. And again, now this is 102 proof, but no alcohol. Right. So yeah. you're, you're yeah, drinking this a, is this, it tastes like an 80 proof. Yeah. It's got that complexity and it's old. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's stunning. These are excellent. So you're sourcing all your barrels? Yeah. So you, you go, you fly to these places and you go taste them all? Yeah. All right, if he needs help, you guys just, <laughs> you shoot to the video I'll and I'll get the information to Eric, okay? We're heading back down to Belize in a, about two weeks. All right. Next batch. So I think, I want to share what we got coming. So those of you that stayed till the end of the video, you're going to find out about something super special we got coming. So you guys want to dump that real quick and let's talk Not about really, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, this is a Barbados. It's got a different label. It's got my business card on it. Cause I wanted to make sure I, I claimed, <laughs> I claimed it. This is Joe's barrel. So we got a barrel coming in and it's a 15 year four square from Barbados. And, you know, they're getting super popular. Uh, yeah, Brent Minnick called it the... Oh, the, I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, Did yeah, you want some? <laughs> um, the, the Papier well, Rum. Yeah, you know what? I, it's pretty amazing. When I tasted this, and I know a couple bourbon groups have done some of these bottles. They're going to be around $160. We're doing our best to work to get them down in price, but they're... 15 years old and they're real 15 year olds yeah so and i, I we always got to talk about that because there's some gray area in all the liquor business and i don't want to bring that up but these are 15 year old barrels this is a four square barrel from barbados that the proof is going to be somewhere around 130. we don't know that for sure because it can change it changes we talked a little bit about over over the water it can drift one or two percent yeah so we'll see where it comes in 128, 131, 127. I don't know where it's going to come in, but I will tell you what, when I drank it, I was blown away and I was looking at Chris. I was like, Chris, are we ready to do a barrel of this? And he said, he goes, Joe, there, there's only a few. And I hate when I hear that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me that's a Buffalo Trace no, barrel too. No, no. <laughs> I do know what barrels are. What barrel are. is that one? It's a Jim Beam barrel. It's a Jim Beam barrel. That's awesome. No, it's good to know that, right? Because then we get that sweetness from Jim Beam. But I don't even know how to tell you how good this barrel is. And I hope you guys hung on for the whole video to really understand it because, and I'll put some more out. When's my barrel coming? Uh, it's loading on the boat, I think in two weeks. And so should be bottled about a month after that. So about eight weeks, we'll see it, maybe seven weeks. Guys, this is spectacular. This is, 
the, one of the bottles that I was like, wow, I can't believe this. It's just one of those spirits that sets itself apart. I, I was tasting all the four square rums, but I didn't realize they could be that much better. Yeah, Richard So tell Seale, me about it. The four square Give distillery me. in Barbados, uh, run by Richard Seal, who's a fourth generation rum maker. Um, and he's arguably the best rum maker in the world right now. Um, and every, everything he puts out, he's never put out a bad release. He puts out his own special cast series that disappear quickly. And he's been kind enough to, uh, you know, let us choose some amazing barrels. Wow, that's, so where's he from? He's a Barbados. He's been in Barbados for 300 years, his family. So does, well, he's been there 300 yeah. years. I want no, to meet yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like something. I'm not, I'm not. What's he taking? <laughs> I want to look at, those must be great vitamins. Yeah. And, um, and he's still down there. So he's, and so, so Barbados is known for great rum, right? The birthplace of rum. Rum was first started in Barbados in the 1600s. So I just want to ask you a couple questions so everybody learns them. Mm -hmm. Do they do column still, or pot still? How do they do it? Uh, the Barbados style is a blend of pot and column. So we got a blend again. This is a blend. And then, so so for the, for the bourbon heads, the people that really get into some of this stuff, so I'm going to make this bourbon, I mean, make this uh, rum. What am I casking at? What proof am I putting that rum in? And guys, this is some stuff I found is really shocking that it comes in because I, uh, how do they get to these high proofs? Because there's these yeah. massive loss of product, but where do they well, proof here's at? Here's the thing, uh, bourbon proofs, you know, 125 and has to be 125. Yeah. Rum generally goes in between 75 and 85%. Uh, because at that temperature and the heat and the humidity you want you know, you want more concentrated alcohol. And you stop the the right. loss of alcohol because you're going to have a lot of evaporation from the water. Is that right? Exactly. So I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I just want to start to learn each little little points we could pick up from talking to people that are experts and owners and passion for this stuff. I love people that have passion for it. But let's just talk about this because this is almost like romance. I was ready to leave the video <laughs> and go sit on the couch because it's an amazing 15-year bottle. It is. It's off the charts. Yeah. Barbados, really. <laughs> Barbados rum is tough to beat. Yeah. So, I mean, but these rums are comparable to any high-end scotch or bourbon out there, <laughs> bar none. Yeah. So here's the thing. I want to tell you what I what I feel, and then you guys chime in. And so this is. I don't know, gonna be right around 130 proof, drinks like 90. Yeah. So anytime we get those, for those of you that know me and, and know what I choose and, and what my palate is, this is a grand slam. Uh, forget about the category. Uh, if I don't drink rum, I drink it tomorrow. This is a <laughs> grand slam. I mean, it really is. And it hits my palate so solid because the flavor is so robust. I have to sit there and really concentrate on it and learn it but I'm not tasting the alcohol. And so I'm getting this beautiful sweetness off it, but it's touching. It's not like, it's not like this, I'm drinking rum. You know, when you, when you drink those, right. does that make sense? Absolutely. And it's just gentle and delicate. It's, it's fine. It's got dark fruits. Um, it's got like, a, almost like a, let me, I, man, it's, I can't get that note. To me, the signature What's, note is like, the butterscotch, the molasses, yeah. you really get the burnt sugar yep. in the Barbados rooms. Almost like a toasted marshmallow. Yeah. It's I think this is more like love. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I don't, I don't, you know, it's so hard because when I hear burnt sugar, mm. it's always funny when I hear that because I know what burnt sugar smells like mm -hmm. and I don't like burnt sugar, but I hear molasses that's cooked properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Burnt sugar is like, I don't know. Guys, this is just so it's darn good. When, whenever this barrel arrives, I want you to know that it comes with a 100% return policy. If you're, if you're lucky enough <laughs> to get the bottle, <laughs> oh, wait a second, it's not, it's not a return policy empty though. But, <laughs> because it's so, it's so damn good. And if we're gonna take a risk on a bottle of rum, yeah. I want you to take a risk. I did tell you something, Holmes K, Every one of their brands is spectacular. You do a great job. Thank you. I, I mean, I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to getting the Fiji uh, at a more, mar and I want to say a more affordable price at $50, yeah. you know, because we got to, we well, I want everybody to be able to taste. You, you, you have an amazing palate, amazing company. I want everybody to be able to do it, right? I mean, that 
this, that's some a different planet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we'll work on that one. Um, the Belize is my favorite. Um, I'll drink all three. I have these two at home. I finished this one. I, I think you do amazing job, and I'm not a rum drinker. Right. This is where this now is. Uh, I mean, me. I'm a bourbon guy, tequila through and through. This has totally converted me. Now uh, this is like, Chris. No one was asking you. Eric and I were having a conversation. <laughs> okay. I'll go, right. <laughs> I'll go sit in the corner. <laughs> I just tease it. My wife was a bourbon drinker when I met her, and uh, you know that first night was rum from then on out. Yeah. No. These are all right, guys. We got to start trying these, and I'm going to get my tasting counter open shortly. Yep. which I'm so excited about because we're bringing stuff like this out. We need to get people to understand these categories. Yep. This is spectacular alcohol. Uh, I, I, Eric, thank you so thank much you, for coming Joe. to my store. Happy to be here. Uh, what, you got? what you got for me? <laughs> anyways, Chris, thank you. And uh, hey, guys, remember, always, thanks for shopping at Lucas, one bottle at a time. We truly appreciate your business. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you want to hear. And always, have an amazing day, and we'll see you soon.